but they they spend so much of their time and they're so angry. They're so angry. And they, they their existence has been trying to trying to well uh, I I don't know, they they claim that God doesn't exist yet they spend all of their time warring against you. Okay. I mean that that's like a you know, fighting with a puff of smoke or something. I don't know. But anyhow, <coughs> two words used right here in God's Word in the Bible. There's two words used to describe such an individual. And they're simple-minded and a fool. The simple and a fool. <coughs> That's from God's Word in the Bible. Yeah. God's Word in the Bible doesn't make mistakes. Now, <coughs> let's take a look at reality through the mind of Christ. Amen. And I'm going to have to hurry this up a little bit because I've got a lot more to get through. Turn to uh, one of my favorite passages of Scripture, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Yeah. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 1. <clears throat> and I, brethren, when I come, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or wisdom declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And I was with you in weakness, and in fear, and much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and the power, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Albeit we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of the world, nor the princes of this world that come to naught, but we speak the wisdom of God and a mystery, even hidden wisdom, which God ordained before the world unto their glory, which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would have, they would not have crucified the Lord of God glory. Now you see here, Jesus spoke to those, and he told them, had you not been told, and had you not been shown, you'd have no sin. But since you've been told, since you've been shown, you've got no clue. They were told, and they rejected it. They rejected it. They didn't believe. But as it is written, I have not seen and ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God revealed them. You know, you, know, you can say that you love God, but let me tell you, actions speak louder than words, right? Yeah. Yep. And, uh, folks, there's a few things God demands of you. One, praise. Yep. You know, when, uh, when you need to praise God, you're to praise God. Okay? Praise and worship. If you can't sing, then just put your hands up and make a funny noise. Right? <laughs> you're to praise. Right? Amen. The Bible says make a joyful noise. You're to worship. That means you pray and you worship God. You thank God, right? Thank you, Jesus. Service. That means what you do, what you do is not nearly, nearly as important as what He wants you to do or what you have to do for God. See, look, it's about to, It's not about us. This world is not about us. Okay? And see, it's going to take, take some people a lot longer to figure out that God will always, 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 always honor every commitment that He makes to you. And you cannot give God. You cannot do it. And when you're, when you honor God, and when, when you do what He tells you to do, there are people that, and, I, and I've known a lot of people that will get up and leave before they take up an offering. Let me tell you something. I'll guarantee you this. See, people that don't understand, now God gives them a little bit of leeway until they're told, like we just said. Jesus said, had you not been told to show. But when it comes to tithing, once they're told, you see, God has, has blessed them. But once they're told, and, and God says to them, test me, test me, and see if, if you know, and he's not talking about just materially. He's talking about God will, will bless you with bless, blessings that you have no idea, blessings that's beyond your comprehension. I'm going to tell you one thing. I, I would take good hell over money any day. Amen. Okay. Amen. You know, I, 
knew one day that my good looks might run out. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> well, no. Okay. I, I'm hearing that. I'm hearing that. Anyhow, no. But you see, the only person you cheat when you don't tithe is God. No. Can the man cheat God? You don't get away with it. When, when you don't serve Him, when you know you should be serving God, when you know you should be giving a good portion of your time to the Lord's work and you don't, then guess what? You're robbing yourself. You're robbing yourself. Each and every time. God always honors your commitment and He always rewards you according to your works, right? He goes on and He says, But God has revealed unto them unto us by His Spirit, for the Spirit searches all things, yes, deep things of God, absolutely. <laughs> for what man knoweth the things of man, save the Spirit of man which is in man? Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is judged of no man, for who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him. But we have the mind of Christ. If you're saved, you have the mind of Christ. If you're saved, yep. you have the mind of Christ. Right. If you're saved, you'll understand what I'm preaching. You'll understand what I'm saying to you today. Yep. And if you don't understand that, if it's not registering, you're in more trouble than you can imagine. Right. You are in more trouble than you can imagine. Now let's take a look at, at proven, historical, <laughs> and factual truths. The documentation is so very, very clear, and so very precise, and so very accurate. So, we're going to start with here, as we go and take a look about the only true accountable origins. And I'm just going to go through some, let's see, this is documentation. This is what makes the Bible so much different than the Koran and all of these other books. Yep. Okay, the Bible is accurate. It tells you precisely when, precisely where, how God did everything. He doesn't leave you hanging out there. Sure don't. And he does it very clearly. Let me tell you. The creation of space and mass, time and universe. That is in Genesis 1 1. Right there. You can find it right there. Okay. Formation of solid earth in the biosphere. Genesis 1 9 and 10. Genesis 1 9 and 10. It's right there. Origin of stars in the solar system. Genesis 1 14 through 19. Documented right there. Creation of conscience and animal life. Genesis 1, 21 through 25. Creation of man in the image of God. Genesis 1, 26 and 27. I mean, it's, it's spelled out. It's literally spelled out for you. Origin of marriage in the home. Apparently that court in D.C. didn't read this. Right. Genesis 1, 28, 2, 23 and 24. Yep. Origin of decay and death. Genesis 3, 17 through 19. Origin of agriculture and animal husbandry, Genesis 4.2. Origin of urbanization, Genesis 4.17. Origin of technology, Genesis 4.20-22. Origin of the nations, Genesis 10. Origin of different languages, Genesis 11, 1-9. Origin of the chosen nation of Israel, Genesis 12. Does everybody understand that? Amen. You see, to, to me, it's very easy to understand. I'm looking at there; it's spelled out right there. Where did it come from? It's no mystery. I don't, I don't see any fog out there. I don't see any stuttering. Here it is. I can tell you this because I looked all around to find a better explanation, and there's nothing out there that comes close. I don't even think Captain Kirk and, and, and Doctor Spock would even try to <laughs> come up with something. Anyhow, then biblical framework. The universe was created by God's command between six and ten thousand years ago. The 
perfect creation was completed in six 24-hour days. Genesis 1, 1 and 2. Uh, Genesis 3, <laughs> Exodus 20, 8 through 11. Man's sin brought God's curse on the whole creation with suffering and death. Genesis 3, 14 through 18. A classic plasmatic deluge, which means a flood, destroyed the primeval world system and earth structure in the days of Noah. Genesis 7, 14 through 19. Languages were confused and the nation was dispersed at Babel. Again, Genesis 11, 1 through 9. Creation was redeemed at Calvary. John 19 and 20. Colossians 1. 16 through 20. In the future, a perfect creation will be restored and eternal order will be established. Revelation 21 and 22. Very good. Spelled out right there. The creative works of God. Creation of the physical elements in the universe, space, mass, energy, time. Genesis 1 1 again. Creation of conscious life. The nephesh in the Hebrew. Uh, meaning you're, you're both your soul and your spirit in the sense of breath. Uh, animal possesses components of both and created physical elements and conscious life. Genesis 1.21 is all in one verse right there. Creation of human beings in the image of God again. Men and women are triunities of God, soul and spirit in the sense of the divine image. The human body is much more complex than that of the highest animal as is the human soul, breath, complex. Only men and women possess, in addition, the image of God, Genesis 127. Spelled out. It's spelled right out for you, right? Right. Formative works of God, day one, energizing the cosmos, centered in light energy, Genesis 1, 2 through 5. Day two, formation of the atmosphere, firmament, hydrosphere, both of which are necessary for life. And are unique to earth among the planets. Genesis 1, 6 through 8. This is spelled out. This is evidence. This is proof, right? Why don't we ever have the opposition talking about this? Why don't we ever have those people who refer them to themselves as, as scientists? Second Corinthians 4. Speaking of this, day 4, formation of the atmosphere in a different firmament, Hebrew, or quiet, referring to an expanse of stretched out place including all the stars and galaxies and planets. Genesis 1, 14 through 19. Day 5, formation of different kinds of animals for the atmosphere, birds, and hydrosphere, fishes, each to replace only after its kind. Genesis 1, 20, 23. You see? After its own kind. What does that tell you? Right there, that alone tells you that there is no evolution. Amen. Nope. That alone, that, that tells you right there. There was never, I remember even being a kid in high school, they were teaching in some of the science classes that while you were in the womb, you were a fish because you had gills until you got born. And then you became, you know, now, you know, some of you might have been a grand tuna or something. With others. <laughs> <laughs> May have been a sardine, I don't know. I mean, I mean, yeah, that's what they were teaching. We were talking about that the other day, how we were laughing. Some of the things that they, they taught, I remember as a kid in high school going back, to, and they were saying how that by the time we would have, I think it was 1986, cars would no longer have rubber tires. They would no longer, they would be riding on. How many of you older people remember that? Yeah. Okay. You said they would no longer. I'm looking around out there. I think they're wrong. Okay. <coughs> now, what they could have said that the price of tires would be five or six times more than it is. <laughs> Day six, formation of, of the different kinds of animal, of land animals for the atmosphere and biosphere, as well as one male body and one female body to serve as generators of all later human life. Day 7, completion and sanctification of all the work which God created to make. Genesis 1, 31 through 2, 3. So, I mean, I could go on and on, on and with this, and the, the outline of world history, according to Peter, 
the world that then was. And, you know, I, I have that song that we made, and that seems in there. But it gives you a whole a listing of these things. So now, let's go over to Hosea <laughs> chapter 4. <laughs> and I want to read verses 1 through 6. Now we're often told how we are man because of technology and man because of the SUVs. It's your SUVs, okay, and I think it's your guns too. It's, you know, they're bad, right? They kill people. Right? Anyhow, uh, that is destroying the environment. But guess who had a guess who had a handle on this long ago? God tells you exactly what is destroying the environment. Spells it out literally, absolutely accurately. He says this, Hear the word of the Lord, you children of Israel. And again, that applies to all the world. For the Lord has a controversy with the inhabitants of the land because there is no truth, no mercy, nor knowledge of God in the land. Yesterday at that conference, one of the things that kept coming up is how uh, society, what it's been reduced to, how we're imploding, and how America is, is bleeding and dying because of the lack of morality. And they were talking about, I had a, a woman call in from Tennessee the other night on the radio, and she was saying how she was so upset, uh, she's an older woman, and uh, she had gone into a, a store, and uh, I guess the girl at the grocery line was having some kind of a problem, she said, I'm having a, and she used the F-bomb. Just an old, she said, I'm having one F-bomb. The young, the young, see, when I was growing up, you would hear the boys say that out of stupidity. You would never hear a girl use that word. Right. Never, ever would you do that. Boy had tattoos. But they have yeah. been reduced, yeah. the morality of the women have been reduced. And it seems to always hit the women first, like it did in the Girl Scouts. They went down first and... Um, the, the YWCA, they went down before the YMCA. It always seems to hit them first. But here he goes on and he says, By swearing and lying and killing and stealing and committing adultery, if they break out, blood touches blood. That's why one of the recent things we talked about last night, the radio program on Friday night, I had a state representative on there, Christine. And she's been working on, with the rest of us, on trying to get a heartbeat bill passed. And... America, folks, you have to understand something. God means what he says. Listen, God means what he says. Thomas Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson said it made him tremble. It made him tremble when he thought that God meant what he says, a holy God, because of America. I mean, boy, I'm going to tell you, she was nearly, not nearly as bad then as she is now today in her sin. But our sewers from coast to coast have run red with the blood of the innocent children. In God's word, the Bible says, guess what? Their blood cries out to him and bears witness. Not just, not just against the, the ones that are having abortion. Not just against the ones that are having abortions. Proverbs 24, verses 10 through 12, demands that everybody do all that they can to stop that sin. Do you understand? So when those babies' blood, when it cries out to God, it's bearing witness, unless you're doing something, to stop that horrible, horrible sin, it's bearing witness against you too. Yep. Let me tell you something. Ignorance of a law doesn't get you out of the penalty zone. I don't wear my seatbelt, Pastor. I mean, you can say, well, I don't choose to believe that. That's all right. You will. God says you will. God gets it right every time. Now look. He says, therefore shall the land mourn. Here's the reason for the destruction of the environment right here. Therefore shall the land mourn, and everyone that dwelleth therein shall languish with the beasts of the field. And with the fowls of the heaven, yes, the fishes of the sea also shall be taken away. Why? It's man's sin that destroys the environment, not SUV. Therefore shalt thou fall in the day, and the prophet shall fall with thee in the night. And I will destroy thy mother. Thy mother means the country. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, because thou hast rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee. Listen, listen. You want to you want to know why the, our young people were sending them to college today? 
and they're coming out dumber than when they went in? Here's the answer. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, and thou shalt be no priest to me. You see, we're supposed to be a nation of priests. Did you know that? All of you. We're supposed to be a nation of priests. See, and thou hast forgotten the law of God, I will also forget thy children. Look at our poor children. Look at these kids. The late night comedians make a living off telling jokes about their stupidity. Well, I want you to go over to Isaiah chapter 32. Familiar verse here. I'm going to go through this a little quickly. Behold the king. Now what is he talking about? In Isaiah 32, he's talking about the days just prior for the Lord Jesus to return and set up his millennial kingdom. And he will do that. That will be done exactly when it's supposed to be. Exactly the way it's supposed to be. Behold, the king shall reign in righteousness, and princes shall rule in judgment. And a man shall be as in the hiding place from the wind, and a covert from the tempest, as waters of, of rivers of water in a dry place, as the shadow of a great rock in a weary land. Who's the rock in the weary land? Jesus. Jesus is a rock in a weary land. And that's what he's talking about. During that millennial kingdom, the Lord will be that rock. And the eyes of them that see shall not be dim, and the ears of them that hear shall hearken. You know what that means? That means a lot of those things that we don't quite understand now, it's in the Bible, we're going to understand very clearly. Amen. The heart also of the rash shall understand knowledge, and the tongue of the stammer shall be ready to speak, to speak plainly. The vile person, now listen to this, this was written 2,800 years before 2,800 years ago. 2,800 years ago, this was written, now listen. And he's telling you that just before the return of the Lord to set up his money on kingdom, the vile person shall be no more called liberal, nor the churl to be bountiful. In other words, he's telling you that during the millennial kingdom, the vile person will not be called a liberal. But prior to that, the vile, vile person will be referred to as a liberal. Now, a vile person is someone who is repulsive to God. Now, today, if you call yourself a liberal, what do you embrace? Sin. Sin. Every kind of sin and violence, right? Every kind of sin and violence. Now, for the vile person will speak villainly, and his heart will work iniquity to practice hypocrisy. Amongst the liberals today, hypocrisy is something that's embraced. They literally boast about it. To practice hypocrisy and utter error against the Lord, to make empty the soul of the hungry, and I will cause the drink of the thirsty to fail. The instruments also the churl. Churl's a miser. A miser. Huh? Well, it's like a liberal today. See, liberals today are generous. They're just not generous with their own property. They're generous with other people's property. They're not generous with their own freedoms. They're generous with other people's freedoms. You see. The instruments also of the churl are evil. He devises what he devises to destroy the poor with lying words, even when the needy speaketh right. But the liberal devises liberal things, and with liberal things he shall stand. It means he's in a world of hurt. And then I want to close with this. Matthew chapter 24. You're all familiar with this verse. Verses 32 through 35. Now learn a parable of the fig tree, and his branch is yet tender, and putteth forth leaves. He knoweth that the summer is not. Now remember, folks, he had withered that tree, and they, now the apostles had seen that. Now he's telling them that that tree, that the dead nation will be brought back to life in the future. So likewise, you, when you shall see all these things, know that it is near even at the doors, Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass to all these things be fulfilled. And here's the verse. Right here it is. This is it. Heaven and earth shall pass away, 
but my words shall not pass away. There, right there. Amen. Amen. That'll happen. His words will not pass away. So the world is in for a very rude awakening. Yep. And we don't want to be a part of that. No. You've been listening to us today on the Liberty Works Radio Network. That's the Eagle 104.3 FM in Tampa and Ocala. And I'm Pastor Sanders, and we've been coming to you from Doers of the Word Baptist Church. 14781 Sperry Road in Newberry, Ohio, with the zip code of 44065. And until next week, we want to say to you, good morning, God bless, and remember, always, always, keep fighting the fight! After that message, how many of you feel like you don't want to be stupid anymore. <laughs> See, <we're amazing. laughs> Josh are on the verge of becoming full-blown radical. All right. <laughs> radical. Yeah. They're getting into it now out there. So. Peggy had the honor of becoming Miss Bacon Lewis and Tomatoes. No. <laughs> Does that come with a prize? Come they were good sandwiches. You yeah, they were. Them. Pastor, yes. I heard that the Pope said, you know that Zeke virus? Yeah. He said that um, if a woman has it and have a baby, he should, they should abort it. Okay. The Pope would be yeah. very well off to keep his opinions to, more to himself. Yeah. 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 Wow. Man is sin. What he said. Say, Man is sin. Uh, Here's, here's a guy that uh, has come out and, and uh, he is, he's a communist. Yeah. 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 No, he's a communist. Yeah. Okay. If, if he hadn't said one other thing, but there's one thing, and I heard him say, if he hadn't said that, okay, maybe the other things could be excused. But yeah. he actually said that Christ failed to kill him. Yeah. Christ yeah. failed to kill him. How could you say such a thing? Oh, you well, say, it should yeah. be more if you're going to make Catholics. a statement like that, then, it, then explain what you mean. You know, yeah. Yeah. See? And here's what I mean. Because sometimes they're coming from a complete different direction, but he didn't do that. He just said Christ okay. failed to Calvary and walked away. Now, that fits in with the teaching of liberation theology. Yeah. So. Okay. Do we have words of praise today? How many words of praise do we have up there? Yeah. Uh, I'd like to thank the Lord. I have a uh, new grandchild coming. Praise the good Lord. Amen. You're looking more and more like a grandpa every day. <laughs> yeah, Bob. Same, same with me, like uh, Jeff. All right. Yeah. We need to pray for your daughter-in-law today too. We're 
going to be doing some praying here in a minute, okay? Uh, we'll praise the Lord for that. Uh, what else, what other words of praise do we have today? Yeah, Coupon. Well, I'm thankful I, my uh, oncologist, my cancer doctor, wrote a note to tell my nurses that it's okay to use the herbs on my uh, cancer lesion topically. They were giving me a real hard time about it. Well, good. Kevin's been using those on his head. Yeah. He looks better. <laughs> Goodbye told me he was re he reduced the swelling. I said, you got to move that reduction of swelling up a little bit. <laughs> yeah. so what other words of praise do we have? Well, wait, I got one. Albert's here before the service is over. <laughs> Congratulations, Albert. <laughs> and we want to praise for, for Joe back there because yeah. Joe's been having some tough weeks here. Yeah. And uh, praise the yeah, he's been having some tough times. You've been giving that doctor a lot of business here. Right? Oh, yeah. You're going to the clinic. <laughs> I want to praise the good Lord. I'm feeling better today than I have. Uh, Great. Yeah. I've had that walking pneumonia, and it is, it is very, very. Oh. praise. Come on, everybody should have something. God, we need to praise the Lord. We all have something to be thankful for. Okay. It's minus 17 yeah. a year ago. Mike. <laughs> well, I just listened and we got the family together for my nephew's birthday, and this time everyone came. They came late as usual, but they came. Well, they praise the good Lord for that, huh? Okay. Because you got to know something. A whole lot of people don't have any family. Yeah, no, yeah. we still try to celebrate birthdays and everything. We all get together and Praise the good Lord. Yeah. You folks, I'll be praying for us tomorrow morning as I call that prison down there. Yeah, and that it, it's worked out peacefully. Mm -hmm. uh, so I don't have to call upon you to storm the gates. Storm the gates. Uh, mm -hmm. who, who, who else has words of prayer? <laughs> Praise. Yeah. Martha. Um, it's been a year since Dick's uh, brain surgery and it's just a, you know, the miracle. I praise God for how far he's brought him. And Thank God. The progress he's made. Praise the good Lord for that. Amen. <clears throat> other words of praise. Who else have other? Yeah, Grandma. I thank the singles for bringing me to church and John Donnellan and my friends from Rocky River, Charlie Wilson, uh, being here sometimes and taking me home. Very good. <laughs> I'm going to leave my swimming trunks that we used in Virginia. He, he was lusting over those trunks. I didn't need a test. The latest in fashion. Is there a brick on the passenger side of John's car? Oh, no, no. He's an excellent driver. You don't have to stick your foot off the door then. And the book is absolutely accurate. It's the greatest source of information in existence today, and yet very few people bother to pick it up, huh? Very few people bother to pick it up. And that shows you the. Uh, that's uh, that. I guess goes right along with you know the title of the message: "The Ways of the Wise Reject the Politically Correct Simple Minded." Okay, well, if there's no more words of praise, then we have some prayer. Uh, Ken and Mindy are, are out today. Who, did you say they had the flu? They're not feeling well. <coughs> Boy, everything's, everybody I was talking to yesterday, so many people there were saying how they've been, they've been sick, they've had this stuff swung around. Now, Wendy told me 
about uh, a little, uh, probably about, what, um, six weeks ago when I had her on the radio program. She said, there's this new strain of flu that's going after old people. And I said, well, I don't have to worry then. <laughs> she says, going after seniors. And she described in detail every single symptom that I had. And then she told me that, that it morphs off that into pneumonia okay, or bronchitis. She was exactly right. She'd done her. She's very good at that where it comes to getting the details. Like she did that, that on that, uh, the, what's it, the big, what's the name of that virus? Yeah. yeah, she tells you she did a, a really good job on that. Okay. Thank God we got Pastor Joe out there in Portland who can stand in for you. Yeah, I praise the good Lord for Pastor Joe whenever I call him and ask him to stand in for me. But you know, he's got to give me those his commercials earlier because... If he gets them before Friday, if I give them on a Thursday night, they'll be replayed again Friday. But when he gives it to me Friday like he does, they're replayed again Monday. But the problem with it is, his services don't pass. See how I figure these things out? Tell you what he's preaching on? Yeah, and then I, I announce it on the radio, but i got to have it before Friday. Yeah. Okay. And so he, he's kind of slow in getting me things. Yeah. Well, praise the good Lord for Pastor Joe. He's a real, uh, he's just a, one of the sterling silver. He's a great guy. Mm -hmm. You know, we praise the good Lord that we have him out there. And this week we're going to go out there. I, I kind of hinted around to, to the chaplain arts that we're going to move this, his stuff out of that room back there. He's Mike is a junk collector. Mm -hmm. And he's, he's filling the back of the church up. And we need that because... Uh, you know, here it is, we have um, another church, because Joe's paying rent. He had to move out of where he was because the ceiling was falling in. It's not good, like when you're sitting in church and the ceiling falls on you, that's a bad thing. <laughs> Always remember that. Yeah. Well, so we said, look, <coughs> you have a morning service, we have an evening service. Why don't you use the church here in the morning? We'll use it in the evening, okay? And uh, so... That's what we're trying to do, but we have, we're trying to clear that back room out because he has to. He's got a lot of kids. Like when we were, when we started this church out, it was mostly all children. The pictures in the other rooms you still see are all those kids. But then some of you <laughs> wouldn't grow up. I'll never forgive you, Matthew, Peggy. <laughs> <laughs> you were so cute when you were little, and we all enjoyed you. Now look at you. <laughs> You're still cute, Peg. His hair was a lot redder back then. Yeah, his hair was very, very red back in those days. Yeah. And yeah, they all, I mean, we had all these kids. Little John, John's boy, and all of the Clues kids. I mean, they all grew up. And all the Stouffer kids. Little, little and, uh, and Corsi. Little lady. Yeah, Corsi and uh, Bilstein's. All the Bilstein's. They had one, like nine kids. We had all of those kids in there. And they all went and grew up, and now we, we don't have any kids anymore. So they had a lot of fun at Camp Cheerful because they had a lot of places to run. <laughs> I'll never forget the, you know how it talks about separating the the uh, sheep from the goats. <laughs> I'll never forget that. I was preaching at Camp Cheerful. They had the petting zoo there, and here. The doors come open and these goats come running right into the service. And, and, yeah, I mean, I mean, it's like it was like uh, hey, he was challenging me. These goats come up like that. Uh, I said, "Get out of here, you goats!" And uh, I said, "Get them, guys!" And the men were chasing the goats and they were chasing them all over the place. But those goats was quick. <laughs> yeah, that was that was something. Wonderful. Just like one time when we were over across the street, and then we'll get into prayer. But I was preaching a, <coughs> and I, Isaiah chapter 56 and verse 10 talked about the preachers with dumb dogs. Dumb dogs, too afraid to bark. Just what I said, that right outside the door, these dogs start barking. That was, huh? Who remembers that? I do. Yeah, that was amazing. The Lord's got a sense of humor, don't he? Well, let's, let's have some prayer. I'm going to pray for, let's pray for Ken and Mindy, Lord. We want to just hold up Ken and Mindy and ask that you touch him and heal him and bring him back to his father. And Lord, too, we want to hold up for Bob's daughter-in-law out there that she's, she has her, she's pregnant and she's got that ailment that she has. 
We just want to hold up. First of all, Lord, we want to ask for her salvation, Lord. Yes. We ask, Lord, Father God, the Lord, that uh, the next time the sun rises, the sun rises upon a born-again, Bible-believing, uh, blood-washed heir of the kingdom, Lord, and that she might receive a healing, Lord. And Father God, we want to remember <coughs> Grandma March right up here, right now, and ask, Lord, too, that you would continue, Father God, giving her the strength and the wisdom, the Lord, and keep her Lord with a clear mind, Father God, until you, right up until the time she graduates. <coughs> and then until that time where there is no more <coughs> curse, there is no more pain, Father God. And the same thing for our brother Joe back there, Lord God, who's, who's been having some really tough times lately back there. And Father, we ask too that as we go into the prison, or we call it prison tomorrow, you will intercede on that, Father God, Lord, mm -hmm. uh, and that your perfect will be done yeah. in that situation. And Father, we want to pray for all of our, our men there up in, in prison, Father. Those, Lord, that you would have to be set free, that you would set them free. But Lord, that you would be also a comfort to them, Father God, and a provider, Lord, and a protector. Father God, these things we ask. And Lord, we ask that you bless each and every one here today, and for each and every one here today, you turn their desires towards you more and more, every day in every way, Father God, every day in every way. Lord, that you under, that they understand, Father God, how true your word is. These things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, if there's no more prayer requests, then... Your excuse, go out there. Get those gospel tracks out in the back. Right in that back rack there. We've got our names on them. Get them out. That's what they're there for. Go and find someone that's lost. And give them the word of God. <laughs>